Hello, so we are finally in Canada. It was a long trip. Um, this is actually shot on the 24th of September here in Canada, so it's heritage day. Having a little knertsy in a patriotic little cup. I should probably take that tag off. But we've been in Canada for almost 10 days. Arrived on the 16th, no, sorry, eight days. We still have six days of quarantine left. And that is where we're at. But first, let's talk about getting here. So on the 15th of September, it was D-Day, time to go. We had a shuttle arranged for 11.30 to take us to the Hilton Hotel in Santon, Johannesburg. That was the gathering point for the Emirates repatriation flight. Oh, so that morning was just getting the last things together. We woke up early, had a nice little breakfast next to the pool. Then it was the, the sad part of greeting my in-laws and getting on the bus. I must say that last 10 minutes or so was quite bad. So everybody was quite emotional, but so that, was, that was tough. Greeted everybody, bags were packed, got in the bus and off we went. I thought I had it under control, but a block or two away, I had to put my shades on, a little bit of dust in my eye, I guess. So we headed off to the Hilton Hotel, arrived there, quite busy already, a lot of bags standing outside the foyer. Um, you had to put your luggage down and then go join a queue that was leading into the hotel foyer. Once you get to the front, they basically just check your surname, how many passengers you are, how many pieces of luggage you have. Then you get assigned a number, you get a little green sticker, you had to have on you to say you've been checked in then you take your number sticker and you have to go stick that on your bags outside the numbering they give you so that you know on which bus to get so we ended up on the third bus so once you checked in it's actually kind of nice it's like being in the business lounge you have to pay for things because you can use the restaurant obviously you've got nice facilities available at 1 p.m. they still started calling numbers. Then you can get on the bus, get your luggage. We got on the third bus. I'm guessing that was just before 2 p.m. Bus left Hilton and stopped just outside, probably a half an hour. <laughs> and then finally left to Otamba, which is almost an hour's drive, probably about 45 minutes drive from Santon. Then we arrived at Otamba. You thought you were just going to disembark that side and if that is what you were thinking you were wrong like we were so you arrive there then they switch the bus off and you wait bus pulls up to the entrance of the international departures they say they're offloading everybody's bags like your checking luggage and they're lining it up and when you disembark the bus you must go place your hand luggage on the sidewalk as indicated and then everybody must go stand away from the hand luggage on the sidewalk. They let a sniffer dog out of a car and the sniffer dog goes and sniffs everybody's bags up and down, up and down. It's a fun little game. But once that is done, they allow you to get your luggage and then into the airport. You have to show your health declaration form for the Ports Authority. Once you get through there and you've sanitized your hands, you can go to the bag wrap and then you proceed to the check-in counter. It's eerily quiet on the international side. All the shops are closed. There's nobody else except the flight that's leaving, which is basically our flight. And then you join the next queue. It also takes forever. I think we were probably in that line for an hour, hour and all. What happened when we finally got to the front, when they checked our passports and things, it didn't clear. Um, so they called through to Canada. Canada checked it on their systems, and on their systems, everything was fine. So the problem was somewhere with Dubai system, particularly with my kid's visa and passport. Um, obviously she won't be working, so she's going over on a visitor's visa with approval letter from the consulate. So that's basically where their system got messed up a bit. And then on the international side, there's not a lot. Um, there's just a little Snoopy they set up for you. Yeah, Snoopy, it's a duck shop. So they just have some basic items there. By the time we went through, it was almost six o'clock already and our flight was leaving at 6.30. We basically just entered, bought some water. I would also always recommend buying 
water before you go on a flight. It's also handy when it's finished, you can always ask them to top it up with water from the galley. It's easier to handle than water they place in a cup, because you can close it and put it upside down if you want to. We bought them the flights. They do the usual where they spray the cabin, etc. Everybody has to wear a mask, obviously. It's a bit of an awkward flight. Just leave at 7 p.m. at night in South Africa. You land at 4.30 in Dubai. 4.30 in Dubai is 2.30 a.m. in the morning, South Africa. So just keep in mind, you, you're only taking off around about 7 p.m. So there's not a hell of a lot of time when you get in the air, obviously gonna serve you some dinner. Yeah, and then it's time to sleep. It's already like 9 p.m. by then, and by 2 a.m. the plane touches down again. Um, there was a lot of talk about not getting hot food and maybe just getting like dry food or um, a bun or a muffin. Or... That is not how it was. We got served as normal, normal food, normal beverages. I must also say the Emirates crew, uh, you saw them going into the bathrooms every now and then, um, cleaning it out, disinfecting it, which was quite nice. It was very clean. So we touched down. In Dubai, on time, usually most of your international flights or Emirates flights will be at Terminal 3. It's a big, big terminal. What we planned to do was take a shower, regardless if it was. So the idea would have been to go to the air side hotel. It's basically a hotel that's in the transit zone. They didn't have any rooms available, so I would recommend booking that in advance. So what we opted for was to go to the gym, basically. Of that hotel you can pay to use the gym if that's something you would like to do while you're traveling or you could just pay for a shower it is like expensive almost 200 rand or something to take a shower it sounds excessive but um, it feels good to just freshen up when you're tired like that it was also my birthday at that point so another reason to spoil myself a bit it started over Mahadishu something just over the equator into the northern hemisphere so i missed the southern hemisphere birthday we took a nice hot shower freshened up got some snacks something to eat and then found the spot to sleep a bit we might get to another nap probably around about 20 29 we were boarding our next flight which was leaving for toronto and once again when the passports were checked another problem we had to go to the side and they then make a couple of calls again but finally it got cleared and they said, okay, you're good to go. That was a nice A380, a beautiful plane. I was hoping for a little upgrade to business class maybe, or invite to the bar, or an invite for shower in first class. They've got a shower up there for their first class passengers, but no such luck, not even a little first day. It's a good thing and a bad thing, but most of the flight, your blinds are gonna be shut with the idea that you must try and get into Canadian time. So after liftoff, they serve you a breakfast quickly and then they dim the lights, ask you to shut the blinds. They switch on the little stars in the ceiling and then you should try and sleep, which my kid did fairly well. <laughs> after breakfast was served and the lights went off, the lights went off as well. And she basically slept till probably 7 or 8 a.m. Toronto time. How did my kid handle the flight? Mm. Ups and downs. It goes well, and then it starts deteriorating. And then it gets bad, very bad. You have to give a little pinch or wrap on the knuckles just to keep it under control. Keep it under control. <laughs> then she usually falls asleep after that. And I must say the last four hours of the flight, there was a lot more noise than earlier in the flight. I think all the kids were getting restless. The energy was just too much for them. Another thing I'd recommend is to take your own headphones. Maybe buy yourself a nice pair of active audio cancelling headphones. It mutes the exterior sounds quite a bit. So it's a very nice thing to have. I often just switch the noise cancelling on when I want to go to sleep and keep it on my ears. And then another handy thing, um, buy yourself a little adapter like use a lot of these flights they use those two prong headphone jacks so that's how you use your own headphones if you didn't know some planes do have the single one some don't so it's a good thing to carry on
Just one quick tip when you've got over 20 hours of flying, your ears will thank you later. Yeah, friends. And look at them. Oh, so when we arrived in Toronto, got off that flight and then you have to go to immigration. There is health forms you need to fill out. The best thing I would recommend is downloading the Arrive Canada app and filling those forms out beforehand correctly. Because I made a little mistake on mine. I just started over, so I just went to the side and luckily the phone remembered the stuff I entered, so I just re-entered it and then joined the queue again. After you get your little custom stamp of clearance, you have to go to immigration. I ask you a bunch of questions like, are you bringing anything into the country and da 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 da, what do you have in your bags? They check your papers over there, your work permit or not your work permit, but like in my case they would check my letter of employment. They ask my wife where she gonna work, but she's got an open work permit. You just honest with them, so she's not gonna work immediately, but eventually. So they don't mind that. The most important thing is a me that is on a specific work permit to have my correct documentation, which I had. They're quite friendly, but it takes a while. Um, then you have to sit a bit and wait while they process something. I'm not sure what they do behind the scenes there. From there you go and collect your bags when they clear you. I wanted to call the shuttle service, but thank you Vodacom, let me down. Even though I activated my international roaming, it wasn't working when I arrived. Um, went on Skype, arranged the shuttle to collect us. So maybe put some credits on Skype so you have a backup, make a call. So then we got all our bags, headed off to where I thought the shuttle would be getting us. But I made a mistake, I, I was confused at that stage, I was tired. And then I realized my mistake, after we were running around a bit, gave them a call again, just said, listen, can you pick us up at the other terminal? We were at Terminal 1 in Toronto. And they said, no problem. And they came to pick us up. The shuttle service was quite convenient. We stayed at the Hampton Inn by Hilton. We have to leave the front row of the shuttle open due to COVID regulations. You won't have anybody carrying your bags to your room. So you load it yourself on the little trolley, you take it up to the room. They do not have a restaurant running at the moment, so room service isn't really existing. I'm not sure what it's usually like. So they give you some options. They sent us a menu from a restaurant that delivers there. Breakfast isn't served, that's not a buffet. You go down to reception and you collect your breakfast. It's a pre-packed breakfast. Just back to the previous night. I think at around 8 p.m. my lights started going off. I just got my kid in bed. So when she finally passed out and slept, um, I was also like on the edge of just passing out. I couldn't think straight anymore. I was walking around aimlessly in the room. So when I put my head down, uh, it was lights out. The next morning we had to be at the airport. Our flight was at 2 p.m. We took the 11 a.m. shuttle. Got to the airport, they try and keep everything contactless. So you get there, you disinfect your hands, you enter the check-in zone. You have to check in your own tickets. Oh yeah, when you're checking in your ticket, you say how many bags you need. It prints out the bag stickers that they usually put on your bags. You have to put it on yourself and keep your receipt. And then you go to a zone where you load your checked in bags. Um, you put it on the scan your ticket. The machine scans your bag, poof, takes it away to the next security point. They just check your passports and things like usual with local flights because this was an internal flight. And then we went through the security point. That got a bit interesting. They randomly select me to, they have a little thing they scan across your hands and clothes. And then when I passed through, my bag was also seized. It's got, yeah, my camera in there, it's got a GoPro in there, it's got chargers in there, it's got hard drives in there, so a lot of electronic things. But apparently it picked up some substance. So I had to unpack it, I had to switch my camera on, show them it's working, switch my laptop on, show them it's working, answer some questions, have a pat down. Just stay cool and collected. If you don't have anything illegal on you, there's nothing to worry about. 
So yeah, they move it through, um, waiting for our flights on Air Canada. Another little spoil I did for us was buying premium economy tickets. It wasn't that much more than it would have cost for normal economy, because normal economy doesn't necessarily include bags. Um, so it was just a bit, I think it was less than a thousand rand per person extra. Air Canada was also running a special 15% discount. But that flight, hmm, it was quite naughty. That was, that was a tough little flight for us. She fell asleep towards the end. You couldn't really see much while we were flying. It was very cloudy over Canada all, all flight long. Um, she was asleep when we landed, so waking her up and getting off that plane was a nightmare. We were going into tantrum mode. Luckily, you don't need to go through customs again or immigration. Got her bags. And then I called my colleague since he arranged to come collect us and take us to our Airbnb along with another colleague. That was just because we had so many bags to fit it in normal cars as stuff. Um, they also did some shopping for us, so we had some basic necessities, uh, food, etc. For that first evening or so, first day or two, it's the end of this vlog. <laughs> because, um, yeah, I think the, the stay of the Airbnb, I'll, I'll follow up in a different vlog. So if anybody has any questions, as usual, about the flights, I'm not sure um, what happened on arrival here. Is the regulations changed? The borders opened in South Africa. Obviously, with fine print, only certain countries. Uh, Canada still has their own restrictions. So you're still gonna kind of go through a similar experience at this stage. Hopefully for some, it's almost going. It won't be all the rigmarole we had to go through. But yeah, we'll speak in the next vlog. Um, if you like it, subscribe, like, please leave a comment. Say what I can change, something you want me to speak about, questions you might have. Um, this is almost just like a diary for me, so... Um, I'm just speaking what's on my mind, but if there's anything more specific, please ask. I will gladly answer. Have a good one. Cheers.